Houston, we have a problem, but I know how to fix it because you don't need a hot dog to put into the hot dog bun. You can make a burger dog, and that's what I'm making today. That's right, a burger dog. Sometimes you don't have a hot dog and you gotta put something in that hot dog bun or even vice versa. You could slice some hot dogs in half and put them in a hamburger bun. But for this today, I'm gonna be making some stuffed burger dogs. What I have here is about a pound of 8515 ground beef and I'm just gonna divide this amount in half roughly. Set part of that aside. Then I just wanna work this into a rough sort of hot dog length, just length. We're not worrying about the thickness of it right now. I'm gonna take some parchment paper here and I'm just gonna roll this down. Let's see the thickness we've got. That's pretty good. That's roughly a quarter to three eighths of an inch thick. It doesn't have to be exact. First thing I wanna do is I wanna hit this with a little bit of salt and pepper on the inside. Then I'm gonna brush this with a little bit of barbecue sauce. This is a Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. You can use whatever kind you like. And remember, this is the inside of our burger dog. Go all the way to the ends. Next thing I'm gonna put some pieces of a jalapeno pepper jack cheese. It's a little bit of a theme here today. You'll catch it in a minute. Now I'm gonna put some pieces of jalapeno bacon in here. Want to keep them just a little bit in from the end. And now we are just going to start rolling our burger dog. Now you can do this on plastic wrap, on parchment paper, whatever you find easiest. It's going to be a fairly thick burger dog. It's not your traditional little hot dog. Make sure you try and pinch up any of the little openings that are obvious. There you go. Now you could definitely make this smaller and thinner and a little closer to a hot dog shape by rolling this ground beef out thinner, but you're really not gonna have as much beef in that. And I want a substantial burger dog. I'm gonna go ahead and make another one and then these are gonna go in the refrigerator for 30 minutes to sort of firm up a little bit while I get the kettle going. The kettle is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get my burger dogs on. I'm using the spin grate today from Barbecue Dragon. I'm actually finding uses for this that I didn't think I would. I'm gonna put these over on the cold side here. Excuse me, the cooler side. It's not cold. I'm gonna spin this so that they go over the coals. And give these a good grilling on all sides or as many sides as we can roll them to. And then I will be moving them indirect. It will probably take about 10 minutes indirect after they get a good grilling on the outside. Remember that meat is not very thick, maybe a quarter inch, a little more than that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these. I'm gonna see the easiest way to do this. I might just be rolling them, let's see. There we go. Bring this back over. Works really well. Those are looking really, really good. Got to remember we've got cheese in there we want to melt. We're going to give this a couple more minutes on the direct side and then we're going to turn it to indirect. We'll also be toasting up our buns real quickly. See if I can give this another roll onto sort of this tall side. And we'll be taking these to the indirect side in just a couple minutes now. If you can see the very ends are still sort of pinkish that's what the indirect is gonna help finish cooking. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn these to the indirect side now. Get my buns on for just a quick toasting. And that's good. Yep, just a quick little toasting. All right, lid's going on. I'm not worried about what temp it's gonna be at. The vents are fully open. I'm gonna give it 10 minutes, and then we'll check it with the instant read. All right, it has been 10 minutes. Let's give these a look. 
looking really nice here. Uh, see right here? I got some flaking from my lid. I gotta clean it again. Cleaned it about a month ago, but got a little bit more developing. All right, let's see. I'm gonna check this one right here. It's a little bigger than the other. Yeah, we're showing about almost 130. And I wanna get this to at least mid 150s, about 155, 160. So we're gonna put the lid back on, go for probably another 10 minutes. All right, let's see how we're doing. It's been another 10 minutes. Let's check this same burger dog. I'm just realizing I should have put a drip pan in here. <laughs> Looking good, 154. All right, I'm gonna call that and say done. So let's get these inside and build our burger dogs. Have a couple things to go on them. All right, here is our burger dog. So what I'm putting on first is a mixture of stone ground mustard and that same Jack Daniels barbecue sauce that I put inside. This is a mixture of about a tablespoon of stone ground mustard and a teaspoon of barbecue sauce. Then I have some caramelized onions. Now how I made these was I fried up that jalapeno bacon earlier, the stuff that we put inside these burger dogs. Then in the bacon fat, I fried up a little bit of some white onion. And let me tell you, it smells terrific right now. We're just gonna load this up on the top here. Now I know this is not gonna be as easy to eat as a hot dog that fits neatly in the bun, but just looking at this, I can tell you I don't mind. It looks terrific and it's time to taste. All right, there, there is no cutting into this. I just gotta dive in here. All right, here we go. Mmm, that is messy goodness. Holy moly. Mmm. If you've had stuffed hamburgers before, very similar in a different delivery vehicle, the hot dog bun. But I gotta tell you, sort of that long strip in there of the bacon and the pepper jack cheese, you get a piece in every bite. You know, hamburger, sometimes you're eating around the outside of a stuffed burger, you don't get a little bit of everything. This, you get everything in every bite. Let me tell you, I've done caramelized onions lately in several different recipes. This is right up there with those onions. Now, if you wanted to, you could direct grill these the whole time. You don't have to indirect grill them. I just like doing it that way because then I know that the outside is not gonna get charred or burned too much. It's gonna get more of an even cook throughout. You're gonna get that great outside color from that short period of direct grilling. It's really the indirect that's gonna finish it off and just sort of bring it to perfection. Mm. That barbecue sauce and mustard mixture as a topping is really, really good. I've gotta say, this is actually a little more than a meal. This is an indulgence. So if you ever find yourself with some ground beef and some hot dog buns, don't hesitate to combine the two and make some burger dogs. And if you get a chance, stuff them like I did or with your favorites. It's terrific.